All right. So today's topic, what do you do when you have a bizarre, unidentifiable drum kit? How do we kind of figure out what the heck this is? So this kit has no badges, no markings whatsoever. It's got things that look sort of like Slingland, but not. It's bizarro. So Chris, first of all, tell us where you got this kit, and then let's go through and figure out what the heck it is. So um, I got this last month from a guy in Maryland. I think he probably got on a Craig or something. Um, and he called it the mystery kit because, like you said, there's, like, there's no identification anywhere on this kit. There's no stamps. Like you said, there's no badges. And there was, like, the grommet here, you probably can't see it, but there's not even a place for, like, a badge to fall off. So there was yeah. never any badges in the first place. It's a well-kept mystery kit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so kind of, like you said, the history, I got it last month. He didn't really know anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, there's not, like, any weird, like, telltale signs that there was a badge or anything else. Like, this looks like just the way that it was made. Um, it's got, like, a foil wrap. <laughs> this is crazy. Which I've never seen before. Uh, you know, I've seen... Wallpaper, put on yeah. drums. I've seen uh, leather. Um, <laughs> I've never seen a foil. And he, you know, he, whoever did this did a pretty nice job. If you take the heads off, you can kind of see where he marked where the wrap's going to go with the pencil. Um, so, do you think this is a homemade kit, or was it built in a factory? I think that it, that if I had to guess, you know, with all my history of listening to true crime. <laughs> uh, somebody probably bought shells from a factory and drilled it out and probably made some of these parts on his own. The most intriguing part about this kit to me, Mike, is, is this. And I don't think you can see it, but this is a symbol mount. But when we were putting together the kit, it's like not like a, like a classic L-arm symbol mount. It's like literally... He made it so you could just use a symbol stand. Stick your symbol stand in it. Which is what we did. We took part of a DW and just kind of jammed it in there. And it's got this little, it's, you know, frankly, it's whoever made it did a pretty dang good job. So let's go through a bit by bit. The tension rods are weird. We determined they're steel, but they don't look like any tension rods I've seen. The lugs sort of look like what they might be Slingerland I lugs. think the lugs are actually Slingerland. And I think. Because it, it it almost looks like they're aluminum, but they're not. It looks like he somebody brushed them. Yeah. I don't know why somebody would do that, but they definitely look like they're Slingerland. The they could be they could be Japanese, but okay. And the hoops look like fake Slingerlands. Yep, they're, they're probably Japanese. And you can see the weld seam on the hoops. Like there's two weld seams in this hoop here, um, which usually means it's some sort of import hoop. Oh, you can see, really? Yeah, and you can see. I mean the 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 plating is flaking off you can see like the metal underneath there okay so. so if you can see weld seams in the hoops that means they're imports if it's like a very visible well seam, usually it's like if it's a, an american company they did like a, a better job of hiding like a weld seam. Mm. you know what i mean okay so originally before we started recording you thought this was european but it sounds like it's about a lot of japanese parts yes so I think the shells would look European to me, which is weird because they're Luan. So a lot of stuff, you know, coming out of England was birch or beach. Mm -hmm. Premier was birch. They used some beach rings. Sonar. Uh, yeah, beach. Olympic. A lot of the stuff in Europe was birch, but these aren't birch shells. But they're also not like the thin Luan shells you'd get on a stencil kit. Mm -hmm. So stencil kits, if you know what a stencil kit is, it's a uh, kit that was made in one of the factories in Japan put a bunch of, there's like hundreds of different brands, not hundreds, but a lot of different brands with different badges, but they're essentially all the same shells. These are thicker shells. So they're thicker Luan shells. They look like they're six ply and then they have thick rings. I've seen that one time on a kit and I can't remember where it was made, but it just seems that they look like they're a little better quality than what will come out of a Japanese factory. So where did they come from? I think some guy bought these from a drum factory and there are lots of, not lots, but there are German brands and Italian brands of drums that are smaller that like you wouldn't probably have even heard of. And like mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the history of that very well either. But 
they will pop up from time to time. So I think somebody bought the shells. He drilled everything out. And he had to be some sort of engineer or metal worker because, mm -hmm. again, it's like uh, it's not a bad job on these at all. And there's a couple of weird things which I'll point out later. But one thing that sticks out to me is the, I mean, this all looks like somebody just made this. Mm -hmm. But again, like they did a pretty decent job. This was designed, looks like after a Camco mount. It's kind of like a hexagon, but it's bigger than a Camco and it only has two screws. Um, and the screws are just like regular old. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> so the picture as you pointed out, like all the washers literally are just washers from a, a hardware store. Right, and all the bolts, all the thumb screws. Yeah, I mean it's it's almost like plumbing material here. So somebody made, which is why I think it's it's probably European because I think somebody who you know maybe got a European shell. Um, oh, there, there's also another. I have a kit that has this type of hoops on it where it's it's. So these actually, I don't know if you can see this. The, these aren't metal hoops. This is a wood, a Luan wood hoop that somebody put a metal kind of covering on. And it's the like thick veneer. piece of metal. It's not yeah. a foil. It's but like I have a, a kit in the back where it's it's a wood veneer, and it looks like it's an inlay. And I think that that's also a German kit. Mm. What's the name of it? I can't remember. But there's kind of like hints that make me think that that's why it, you know, it's a European kit. Now, is all Luan vertical grain? Is that a telltale sign of Luan? Yeah. Some, now, some brands will put a veneer on it to make it look like the, like a real thin, sometimes it's maple, sometimes it's beach to make on it look... On the inside? Look, yeah. To make oh. it look like it's not a veneer or like a nada. You know? <laughs> tricky, tricky. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have a... Uh, do we look at that on the last one? It's the Norma kit? Yeah. It has a veneer on the inside. Yeah. Beautiful. So. Cool. Yeah. You can tell with the hoops, there's definitely a vertical grain. Mm -hmm. What else can we talk about? The snare drum is freaking strange. So, <laughs> so can you hear all the can stuff inside? Can you hear all inside? the dust inside? That throw off it? makes no sense whatsoever. So that looks like there was, uh, Kent had a, another brand, which the name is escaping me, and they had a throw off look like this. And I, I call it like a mouse ear throw off for whatever reason, which is what, again, what it looked like it was designed off of. This is the weird part. It literally has this screw it's in like here, a, regular a hardware screw. store screw that you tighten and loosen up the tension on the wires. But it works fine. It works like, It works. But like that's not, somebody made that. Yeah, that's machined. That should be pouring beer out of that. Heck yeah. Or cranking down some straps or something. <laughs> but very cool. Very interesting. The only thing he didn't think about is like how the handle comes above the hoop. Yeah. So somebody, if were to play this for a long time, they would definitely like break a knuckle on it. Yeah, that's a big chunky handle too. What <laughs> else is weird about it? I mean, oh, so, is... so there are a couple of things. So when we put set this up, and I haven't taken like a close look at this. Um, I thought this was a 16. This is a 15. 15 by 15, yeah, right? Yeah, we, we is... tried. So here are the hoops. This is another thing. So these are the hoops that were on here. Heads. Heads. That's the hoops. Yeah. <laughs> and you think these were homemade. They could be somebody just like took and tuck their own heads with like a, but they're not tucked. So again, I, I don't know what is up with this, but we tried to put new heads on there and a 16 didn't fit and we found it was a 15. So this is a 15 by 15. That's unusual. Which, yeah, which is unusual. Um, the floor to, or the bass drum is a 20 by 15. Also which is unusual. also unusual. And then a shallow 13. Eight by 13. Sonar made eight by 13s. Hmm. So the size is also kind of make me think that it's you know from Europe. Um, yeah, very strange. I mean, the, the, somebody made this is not a <laughs> this is not a real thing. Like, look at look at this T handle here, and that washer again is <laughs> is from a hardware Straight store. Straight from a local and, hardware store. And maybe somebody like put their own, you know, washers on here. But oh my lord. Do you have a, a guess on the year for something like this? Um, Probably 60s, maybe late 50s. Okay. Yeah, it feels like a... Like, look at that. There's... <laughs> you can kind of see, like, the machine marks on there, too. But I've, Well done, whoever did it. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you made this kit, we would love to speak with you. <laughs> because we have, we have very many, many questions. Many questions. So this kind of piggybacks on what we talked about in... The episode with you is why would you buy this? Because it's cool, because it 
it's on brand for you? I mean, how do you put a value to it? I mean, it's cool. I'll say it's cool. So that's, that's a couple of things when, I, when you think about taking stuff on is like, um, how does it sound? Is there a market for it? Um, if there's like, sometimes you get stuff that's like rare and like you can't go and find like sold listings for something. So you kind of have to guess. Mm -hmm. I bought this because it's cool. Um, I love the wrap. It's, it honestly like for how kind of like old the hardware looks, the wrap looks like it's brand new. Yeah, it does. Which I think is pretty cool. Um, looks like a bowling alley or a roller skating rink or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> So it's cool. And, and honestly, like... Oh, and the bags. Hold on. Let me go grab a bag. <laughs> so this, so here are the bags. So this to me is the... Let me put the, this down. <laughs> the clear sign that these are homemade drums because they came in perfectly fabricated tablecloth bags that someone spent a lot of time, hours, <laughs> sewing these bags together. That might be for the That's Tom. Not the right <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, you ever been to like your aunt's or whatever, and they pull out like their <laughs> their, their tablecloth for the thing like, you knew they've had since like 1975. <laughs> like, That's what this looks like, <laughs> or like a, a a lawn chair bag. Is it possible that this wrap is a tablecloth? You know, Mike, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> um. Whoever made those did an amazing job. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to say 100% this is a homemade kit. There's no way that you would take the time to make bags for it if you didn't also make the drums. <laughs> Imagine carrying this to a gig. And you know what? None of it's ripped. Yeah, it's got nice buckles on it or yeah, whatever you like, call that. It's pretty great. It's, it's honestly like kind of... <laughs> The kid's cool, but the bags are like cooler. <laughs> you know, this is one of the few cases, Mike, where somebody says, hey, it comes with original cases. And I don't have to say, that's great. I'm probably going to throw them away. Yeah, yeah, I know. These are actually original cases. Well, and like, one of a kind. Yeah, like the, the, all those fiber cases just kind of break. But <laughs> yeah, so the kit, you know, it's sold with the cases too. So, you know, if you're a, a hard touring drummer or spending months and months on the road, these cases will 100% last you. <laughs> This is definitely your everyday gig and kit. What an anomaly. So, yeah, I think the moral of the story is don't be afraid of the weird stuff. Um, well, it's one of a kind kit. I mean, like, if you're if you're somebody who's looking for something that they can, you know, I wouldn't gig with something like this because of the spurs and all that stuff, but somebody like you have a recording set up or something like you want to keep at your house, it's cool. And yep. Quote, unquote, vibey. It's not a, a ton of money. This is perfect. It's got a vibe. It's definitely got a vibe. I don't know that I could get this from a brand new off the shelf, whatever, pick your big name kit. <laughs> you couldn't get this vibe. The Mandini on Amazon makes a very similar kit. <laughs> <laughs> you know those kits? The kids no. kits? Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other, that's a, that's another podcast. All right. So this is the mystery kit. The mystery kit. Yes. Did we solve it? I don't know. I'd say it's homemade. I'll put all my money on that. And you say it's European, so... How about we call it European homemade kit? There we go. There you go.